Taylor Guitars makes an increasing selection of Builders Edition guitars across its range. If you have been looking at these guitars and trying to determine which one is right for you, you've come to the right place because that's what we're going to look at today. Check it out. Hey everyone, you're watching Alamo Music TV. This is Christopher McKee, your host today, and we are going to be looking at Taylor Guitars' line of Builders Edition guitars, which are essentially director's cut guitars. But before we get into that, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe, turn on your notifications, and like our videos because we make them for you. And in that vein, if you have your own music store where you live that you love to shop at and love the guys and, and gals there, that's great. We want to continue uh, to encourage you to shop there. But if you'd like to support this channel, check out the swag we have down below with our partner Teespring where we have a bunch of different Alamo Music designs and you can support the oldest music store in Texas no matter where you are. So let's get into these Builders Edition guitars. What are they? Uh, what uh, models come in this line that is, like I said, growing? And why should you turn a serious eye to getting one of these? So like I said, the Builders Editions are the director's cut. They're Andy Powers' vision of what are the best kind of sounding and feeling acoustic guitars. And they have a certain mix of features that really go beyond just tone to the ergonomic feel of the guitar. Now the one that I'm holding in my lap here is the newest addition to this range of guitars in Taylor's lineup. This is the K24CE Builders Edition. Now the way the Builders Edition guitars are being done by Taylor is they are not part of their own series per se, but they are tucked into the series that Taylor already has. So this is K24. It is basically a Koa model. There is a K24 CE in Taylor's lineup, and then there is the Builders Edition version. We're going to be looking at a K14 CE, uh, which you could get, or you could get the Builders Edition. Uh, we're going to be looking at a 614 CE Builders Edition, and in the same way, there is a non-Builders Edition counterpart. But we're also going to be looking at two Grand Pacific Builders Editions, a 517E and a 717E, and those are a little bit different. There are only Builders Edition versions of those guitars currently. So let's talk about kind of what is the same across all of them. Like I said, they are all designed to be about the ergonomic feel of the guitar. They all have satin, silent satin finishes, which is a new type of finish specifically developed for these guitars when the K14 model first uh, was introduced last year. And as you can see, it's not glossy, it's not shiny, it really has a more upscale kind of orchestral uh, look and feel to it. Now the benefits of this are twofold. One, it's a thin finish, which is going to allow the guitar to resonate more because it is not infringing upon the vibrations as thicker finishes can. And as you go up to gloss things, it has to get a little thicker and so forth. So that's one of the things you'll see in high-end guitars. Thinner finishes allow more resonance. The other part of this, though, is in the name, Silent Satin. A lot of satin finishes are noisy because there's more friction when it moves against your body. Now you can still hear this one, but it's not as loud as a typical satin finished guitar uh, from Taylor or really any other manufacturer would be. So that's going to be the same across the uh, all of the Builders Edition guitars that we're going to be looking at. All of the ones that have a spruce top will have a torrified spruce top. Now, if you are not familiar with torrefaction, that is basically a process that builders are utilizing in order to open up the guitar, uh, kind of age it uh, through a means of pressure and heat. And what this does is it allows the molecular construction of the guitar's top to change, to lighten, uh, and become more resonant, which would normally happen over time. Taylor does kind of a medium rare roast on their tops, if you will. So if it's got a spruce top, it will be torrified. This co top is not. There's a variety of finishes available, um, as we're going to see as we look at all of these. The other thing that you're going to notice on the Grand Auditorium versions is Goto tuners. The Grand Pacifics do not have that. All of these, like the growing line of uh, Taylor guitars, ha feature the V-Class bracing, which we have covered in depth in a lot of our videos. In fact, we've done comparisons right when that was introduced with the x brace and V-Class versions. So if you haven't seen those videos, I'll link to one right there so you can get a uh, 
in-depth analysis of what V-Class is, but basically it's a new bracing uh, structure on the top of the guitar that yields uh, improved volume, sustain, and intonation, believe it or not. So all of these are going to have that as well. The back and sides are going to change. Of course, we're looking at two different body shapes today. And now let's talk about what is the same on all of the Grand Auditorium models. First thing is this right here. This is the armrest bevel that Taylor introduced years ago, first on their uh, presentation series guitars and uh, through the custom shop. And it has worked its way through 900 series, 800 deluxes in former fashion, and on these guitars. And this is incredibly comfortable. What it does is it prevents a sharp right angle here where your arm rests against the body of the guitar. It also keeps your, your arm away from the top so it resonates more. It's going to improve the sound there. All of the binding on this guitar is chamfered off or rounded off. So there's not a sharp angle anywhere. And the cutaway gets the same treatment. It's basically like a double contoured cutaway. So you get the same type of bevel here at the cutaway, but also check out the heel. The heel of the cutaway, or the cut of the cutaway rather, is a convex or concave curve that follows the, uh, the line of the heel here. There's no shelf like you would typically see on a guitar. Um, in addition to that, you've got just really <laughs> beautiful appearances, uh, some inlays that are being featured on these guitars as well, and then, like I said, a number of different tone woods. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the sound of all of these. One last thing I'm going to note, because it's going to come up when we look at the Grand Pacifics, the bridge. The winged bridge has been softened on this one, the K24, not on the 614 or K14, but again, you'll see that on the Grand Pacific. So that's what you're seeing on the Grand Auditoriums. Let's take a look at the Grand Pacifics. So the Grand Pacifics, if you are not familiar with these, is an entirely new body shape and a new sound from Taylor Guitars. Now, the 517 and the 717 are available in a number of finishes, but only as builder's editions, as I mentioned at the outset. So like the other builder's editions, a lot of the features that we're going to see here are to do with both the sound of the guitar, but more importantly, perhaps the feel of the guitar is where a lot of the changes really capitalize. So this has a burst on it, but the top on this is torrified, just like we talked about. It's Sitka spruce, and on this one it's mahogany. The 717, which we're also going to play, is spruce and rosewood. So in this comparison, you're going to see effectively the same guitar with a lot of the same features, but with different tone wood, so you'll hear the difference there. So you can get this with a natural or this uh, beautiful burst top. As I mentioned on that K24, you see the, the typical Taylor bridge, the winged bridge here is actually softened here. And like we've seen, you know, that's all really about the feel. It's about softening some of the contours of the guitar, really making it comfortable to hold and to play. All of the binding is rounded or chamfered off, like we've seen on the Grand Auditoriums. The, uh, this guitar has no bevel here because it's really a very traditional looking round shouldered dreadnought sized guitar. Uh, so there is no bevel there. It's still very comfortable though with the rounding of the binding. And there is no cutaway, and there won't ever be a cutaway, according to Andy Powers. This guitar is meant to be like this and nothing more. Uh, but without the cutaway, there's still some things going on here. If you take a look at the back, it has a rounded heel on the neck instead of that uh, kind of more pointed heel that Taylor guitars typically have, and that is all to go with basically the feel on the hand. Moving up the neck is where some real beauty happens on these guitars. It's rounder here, almost like a soft V as you move up to the nut, and then it has a compound carve that flattens out to more of a C shape as you move closer to the heel. Now this is made in such a way that it's almost transparent to you, the player, but it feels natural and incredibly comfortable. Down here, where you might have more over the top thumb uh, movement with your hand, like say a D with an F sharp in the bass, the profile of the neck fits your hand very comfortably. And then as you move up here, if you do this on your guitar, while you're watching this, just grab it and you'll see what I mean. You naturally, as you move up the neck, transition to where typically you, you're not playing like this you're playing like this with your thumb on the back of the neck. And so the shape of the neck is really done in a way to uh, kind of appeal to how your body wants to naturally move as you play the instrument. 
Um, again, like I said, it has the V-Class bracing. All of these have the ES2 pickup system. And what you'll notice on the Grand Auditoriums and the Grand Pacifics is the relocation of the strap uh, button right there. And that is, again, so that it's not interfering with your hand, whether it's on the cutaway version of the Grand Auditoriums or the non-cutaway Grand Pacifics. You can move up here, and there is no hard strap button that's going to be hitting the palm of your hand as you move up. Um, so really just beautiful guitars. These Grand, these Grand Pacific and Grand Auditorium Builders Editions really create one singular problem. Which one to get? That is the rub, isn't it? Because they are all great sounding guitars and, uh, and I, it's really hard to pick a favorite. So I'm going to let you pick a favorite for me, or really for you rather, uh, because if you've been shopping for these, hopefully this will help you to understand which one you should be getting. So we're going to be comparing first a 614 CE Builders Edition. So that's going to be Torfine Spruce and Bigly Flamed Maple on the back and sides with all of those um, improvements to the ergonomic feel that we saw in the K24. We're then going to look at the K14 and the newer K24. And those are essentially the same guitar, but one has a spruce top that's torrified, one has a koa top, um, and then the softened wing bridge. But if you have wondered the difference between an all koa guitar versus a koa and spruce guitar, this is definitely going to be a good illustration of that change. And then finally, we're going to end with the newest body shape, the Grand Pacific. The 517 spruce and mahogany, and then the 717 spruce and rosewood. I'm partial to the 517 myself. I really love the sound of the mahogany on these guitars, but you'll hear more of a nice, rich mid-range on this versus the, the bass and treble kind of chime that you get on Rosewood. So, put on your ears and listen as we go through all of these and you can hear the differences for yourself.
So there you have it. That is thus far, at this point of 2019, all of the Builder's Edition guitars that Taylor currently makes. Um, I'm hoping to see more in the future. I know that there's a lot of people that kind of have certain things on their wish list, but these guitars really represent a fantastic achievement in both the design and the execution that Taylor is able to do with what is essentially is a very well high high end uh, factory manufactured guitar. Um, their tooling and their craftsmen that are there uh, and the designs that Andy Powers is coming up with are blending features that you typically see in high-end, luthier-built, kind of one-at-a-time guitar makers um, and bringing it down really to a more affordable level. And, you know, a lot of people will probably hear that and say, well, you know, $3,000 or $5,000 guitar isn't really affordable, but the truth is that's all really kind of in context. So, really fantastic guitars. I mean, look at this. This is the 614. Beautiful burst, beautiful maple, beautiful tone. It's tough. Hopefully, the comparison playing helped you, and I'd like to hear from you and, and, uh, and see what you thought. So comment below, tell us what you thought, and I'm also gonna put a link to a poll right up there, and you can vote for which one of these was your absolute favorite. As always, I wanna thank you for watching. Again, if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe, uh, turn on notifications, and like our videos. We try to put uh, one or two of these out a week, uh, looking at everything from different models that have come out to different things that you should be looking at when you are shopping for an acoustic or an electric guitar. We are really just trying to help you get the most bang for your buck and encourage you to play the instrument. At the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is the one that you're making music on. So keep it up. I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We hope you are enjoying our channel. You might be interested to know that Alamo Music has two more YouTube channels. One for piano and keyboard enthusiasts, and the other, our Alamo Music Audio Lab channel that focuses on synthesizers, drum machines, and other things with Chris Klein. So, if you are interested in checking those out down in the bottom of the description, I have links to both of those channels. We hope to see you there as well.